Good morning everybody and Happy New Year. I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody that's taken the time to subscribe to us. Since we started this channel it's made a huge difference in growth in the last 8-12 to 12 months. So thank you once again, we really do appreciate it. Before I get into our top 3 boats for under 50k, I just want to say we'll be at the Dusseldorf Boat Share at the end of the month, so if there are any particular boats or tech you'd like to have us take a look at, you've got any questions that we can answer, please don't hesitate, let us know in the comments below. For our first boat, we've put it at number 3. It is a Beneteau First 38. I'll give you some stats on this boat before we actually start to take a look around over the video. The keel type on this boat is a fin with bold keel and a spade rudder. The rigging type is a fractional sloop with a length overall of 38.25 feet or 11.6 meters depending on you know what language you like. The water length is 31.3 feet or 9.5 meters and she has a beam of 12.3 feet or 3.76 meters. An actual displacement of 14,520 pounds or 6.5 tons and a ballast of 4,850 pounds or 2.2 tons. The first 38 were first constructed in 1989 and the last one actually left the product lines in 1994. The builder obviously is Beneteau and the designers were Jean Bellet and Philippe Stark. Coming into the interior of this boat, on the port side you have a U-shaped galley with or dual stainless steel sinks. In the corner there is a large fridge and obviously you have your gimbal um, hob and stove and storage behind that and underneath there's actually loads of storage in this boat compared to what you'd get in a modern day production boat. Over on the starboard side there's a really good usable navigation desk and I reckon you could put in extra equipment you know Navionics a new VHF radio all that sort of stuff there's loads of space for it. it's well adaptable. The saloon for this age of boat I think is is absolutely huge and on the port side the u-shape settee can actually be converted into a double berth the small pilot berth on the port side I'd get rid of and probably turn it into shelving or more storage and the starboard side settee perfectly functional pilot berth these are actually really really comfortable boats for their size and for their age. Going forward you have a nice v-berth as long as you don't mind a little bit of footsie during the night or snuggling up to keep nice and warm and it has a very functional wet heads on the port side. These boats came in two configurations you could either have them as a three cabin or a two cabin. The first 38 has a really good spacious cockpit they all came as a single helm most of the Beneteau first unless they've been changed by their owners these first 38s you have Genoa tracks or jib tracks down the sides of the boats which obviously gives you larger sail area um, none of that self tacking rubbish these are sailors boats you want to have a lot of fun do some very fast cruising and yet have comfort for yourself and your family you know these are really good bang for your buck it was a really hard choice to put this as our top number one boat or keep it at number two. It's a Halberg Rassi 312. They were first built in 1979 and the last one left the production lines in 1993. There were over 690 of these boats built. The designer was Christopher Rassi and Oli Enderlen. Give you some stats on this boat. Masthead sloop. Total length is 30. 30.9 feet or 9.4 meters the water length is 25 feet and or 7.7 .7 meters she has a beam of 10.10 .10 feet or 3.8 meters a maximum draft of 1.62 meters or 5.3 feet this boat has an excellent comfort ratio of 28.4 and the average headroom in this boat which is excellent is 6 foot or 1.83 meters 
Satan. You can find these at around 45,000 euros and one's in really good condition or take you over budget to about 65,000 euros. We are huge fans of Halberg Rassi and if I could I would buy one mostly just for myself to go day sailing or solo sailing and leave my partner and child at home so I can enjoy a few weeks or a month on my onesie. thing I like about the 312 as in most Hal Halberg Rassies you have a very open foredeck as you can see down on the side you have your main Genoa tracks right by the cockpit and the steering or helming of this boat is actually done by a tiller which I love coming forward on the port side you can see the Genoa tracks and a hatch over for your main saloon this boat from this owner has been adapted a little bit and up in the anchor locker he actually has a, a windlass set in there and so on you can find these boats with or without windlass so have a good look around single mast spreader um you know standard stuff on these smaller boats the cockpit in itself is quite small but you're well protected and normally in the center there's a removable bar there where your main sheet traveler is on this particular owner has actually moved his forward for some reason i don't know why ease of handling or something else but i would prefer to have my main sheet traveler as they come as standard in the middle of the cockpit. Coming down into the companionway, you can see it's Halberg Rassi. On the port side, on the port side, you have the galley with gimbal stove. Some of these models, this particular one has the cool box, some of them don't have them. Uh, this has a stainless steel dual sink with fresh water supply. On the port side, you have a single bench, and on the starboard side, you have a L shaped uh, settee area. It can actually be made into a double berth, but like all Halberg Rassies, the backs of the seats actually come up to give you two single berths on on either side or sea berths extremely comfortable i've been lucky enough to sail on a couple of halbergs now and i absolutely love them there is loads of storage and they are solidly built and really really well built the internal finishes are always to an exceptional standard on the starboard side you have a fully usable a proper nav desk area which you can put all your upgraded instruments in there there's loads of room for them there's loads of room for your um, paper charts and bits like that if you still use paper charts and behind the chart table you'll find that's the pilot berth or what people would call the second cabin it's a really really comfortable pilot berth a wet heads on the starboard side and then on the port side a really good hanging locker area for wet gear or clothes and so on and then going forward you have your V berth in the middle there you have a split where you can put an extra cushion and it is actually a really comfortable double V berth for such an old boat this has loads of light the 312 is an exceptional boat and it was really hard for us to put this at number two within our top three but you'll understand when you see what we've picked for number one if you like this boat you want any more information about this particular boat uh, let let us know in the comments below for our number one our top boat for under 50,000 euros and that's a Contessa 32. Give you a little bit of history from Contessa. The business was set up by Jeremy Rogers in 1969, an English gentleman, and within 10 years had one of the most successful boat manufacturing companies in Britain. Production included Contessa yachts ranging in size from the traditional 26 to the Doug Peterson designed Grand Prix 35S and 39S, and they also produced a 43S. The two most popular Contessa yachts were the sprightly Contessa 26 and the Contessa 32. The stats overall length 32 foot or 9.75 meters and a water length of 24 foot 7.5 32 meters a beam of 9.5 feet or 2.9 meters displacement of 9500 pounds or 4.3 tons and a ballast of 4,500 pounds or 2.04 kilos. They were first started to be built in this particular model in 1972 and they still build the Contessa 32 today by Mr. Rogers' son in the UK. They come with a 24 horsepower diesel engine. Um, comfort ratio is 
27%, which is really, really good, and a cap size formula of 1.8. The average price is around €40,000 for a Contessa 32 in good condition. The Contessa 32 is a classic 32 footer and it's one of the best well known and best loved production yachts ever built. She is a real blue water cruiser whose formidable reputation for seaworthy has been tried and tested by some of the most rugged long distance sailors of all time. One of them is Willie Kerr who has sailed his Contessa 32 Ascent or Ascent I think I've spelled that, said that correctly in just about every kind of weather and in every latitude in an article he writes blue water sailing is about confidence confidence in the yacht's ability to beat to windward out of a tight situation and confidence that she will survive in a storm such as the disastrous one which hit the 1979 fast wet race when ascent skippered by my son alan was the smallest yacht to complete the race unscathed but that's not all particularly easy to handle and suited to short-handed cruising the contessa 32 also has a reputation as a one design racer with a very active class association a truly versatile and exceptional high quality yacht the contest 32 is custom built by craftsmen who know their work and will be appreciated for a lifetime or more